I'm officially in the mood for Christmas now yeah. after hearing that. And so for glad. you guys watching online, you didn't notice that Leslie was tapping and jamming while that wall was playing. Yeah. So you're just as into it as we are. Listen, if, if, you're, if your own music doesn't make you tap your foot, you're in trouble. <laughs> you know, it's got to make me tape my, tap my foot first and then hopefully yours after that. Oh, we love it. Hi. Well. <laughs> hi. I was, I was actually talking to her next to you, but hi to you too. <laughs> How old are you? 10 years old. Oh, I remember being 10 years old. You're fans of all ages, oh. right? I love it. And Christmas is right around the corner. No better time to be with family and friends and have Leslie here uh, with Simply Christmas, your, your new deluxe reissued version of your uh, Christmas album. So exciting. There's four new songs this That's time right. around. Uh, tell us about these four new songs and uh, you know, why you picked them and uh, what they are. The four new songs, if I can remember, are um, Please Come Home for Christmas. Ah, oh, classic. Which is the focus track. Um, when we um, decided to open it up again, the reason why we decided to open it up again was because you work hard on, on a record. Um, they're not easy. This one was especially not easy. And then, you know, you you part of the fun is celebrating the fact that you made it to the end of it. So you get to perform the songs live and, you know, have great conversations like this. And last year around Halloween, I got a call from Kenneth Branagh that said, um, do you want to come to London and, you know, be on set with Johnny Depp and Penelope Cruz and Michelle Pfeiffer? So I kicked this, this album to the curb. I was just like, uh, <laughs> we essentially abandoned the, the project. I didn't get to do any publicity at all for the record because we were shooting Murder on the Orient Express from October until the beginning of March. So, um, so the album, you know, some of you bought it last year, but it's really being introduced to a whole new audience this year um, with, all, with the fact that we get to talk about it. So... The new songs, Please Come Home for Christmas, Christmas Waltz, which you just yes. heard, Edelweiss, which I do with my wife, Nicolette, and, um, oh, and Christmas, this tune that I had never heard before from the Who's Tommy. Um, that's just this beautiful kind of, kind of melancholy tune, but it's just gorgeous, and it should be sung more. Love it. What was it like uh, recording with your wife and having her be part of this great project? Um, I beg Nicolette to sing with me a lot. Um, she sometimes obliges. <laughs> Uh, this time she said yes, but she we we have different processes, you know. Like we don't, we're not cut from the same the same cloth in the way we like to prepare for something. Nicolette likes a lot of rehearsal. I sometimes like none, and um, <laughs> that can create problems. So uh, so yeah, we I, I, like I said, I I enjoy it when we can when we can. Sometimes she'll come on the road with me and perform. She's gonna. She's going to do some upcoming live performances with me and stuff. It's, it's always fun singing with Nick. Okay. Can't give it too, too much away. It's yeah, yeah, nice. Because yeah. all you catch yourself there. Well, because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I bring, I, you know, when she can travel with me, I, I always enjoy that. But some, you know, she doesn't always want to sing on the show. So I don't want to commit that <laughs> she's going to be somewhere to sing. And then she's like, I'm not singing tonight. I don't know why you told them I would, but I'm not. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, what were some of your favorite Christmas albums growing up? Uh, my my all time favorite was um, Boys to Men. Was the yes. Boys to Men Christmas album? That's a good album, y'all. Yeah. That is a good Christmas album. Interpretations, those um you know those original tunes. I think Brian McKnight wrote if if not the entire thing, the majority of it. You know, um, they're great. And um, the thing that I like about it is that it feels it was authentic to who they were. Mm -hmm. It was authentic to their sound, and it was classic. It was timeless. I mean, those those songs are straight up R and B. But if you put that album on today, it to me it you know sounds like a classic R and B record. And so, in our lane, in this jazz lane, we wanted to make an album that um, similarly would, if we were lucky enough to have you um, invited into your homes while you're trimming the tree and hanging out with the family, that it was something that would um, sound as good 15, 20 years from now as it does today. It certainly does. It's got that classic vibe. It really does. That's why we were tapping along with it. Well, this Christmas is going to be a little different from you because you're a dad. Congratulations for the Thank first you. time. You became a dad in April uh, to a daughter named Lucille. Uh, what's it been like? Well, I mean, it's, it's, she's the best, you know? It's just amazing. <laughs> it's, it's amazing getting to know who she is because our kids... Um, you know, we have a hand in creating them, but they're not 
you know, they're not us. And so you have to get to know this new little person, what she likes and how she, you know, what she's into, what her personality's like, what her sense of humor is like. It's, you know, we get to know a little bit more of her every day. She's only seven months. Um, but she's more conscious today than she was yesterday. You know, they just like, you, you get a little piece of them a little you know more every day oh, you guys are so young I mean I'll just tell you your parents your parents love you so much that's all I can say your, she, your mom is endlessly interested in who you are today we just we just like look at her and stare at her and like we're obsessed we're obsessed with her she's awesome you're in awe essentially yeah so Christmas will be really sweet do you have any Christmas plans this year yet um, we're going to, tomorrow's our anniversary, Nicolette Ooh, and I. How many years? Five years, years, five five years, years. married. Wow. Almost 10 years together. Wow. We're like nine years together, five years married. But, um, so we're going to get a tree, um, tomorrow, December 1st, we're going to get our Christmas tree and, uh, decorate. And then it's off to St. Louis. We have a, we have a concert, a concert with the symphony on Saturday or Sunday or something. So, but, um. So we're gonna get a tree. That's a, a that's a tradition that's unique to our family. I don't know if you guys have heard of Christmas trees, but <laughs> yeah, you can you can get a tree and you can put like like glass balls and um, things on it. It's it's really cool. Um, <laughs> we're, gonna get some, we're gonna put some presents under that tree. Uh, we're gonna drink something called eggnog. All right. Um, yeah, lots of lots of new and fresh, exciting things. I think it sounds like it sounds good to us, right? It really does. Okay, so congratulations! You were just in Murder on the Orient Express. Yes. You were here talking about that not too long ago. We're so glad to have you back. Now that it's been a you know, a, I guess it's been over a year since you you filmed that. You know, what was what was like the highlight of that film? Because there were so many amazing people in that movie. Johnny Depp. Um. It probably only because I was on this stage with him talking about the movie, but but working with Josh was obviously a highlight. My yeah. old buddy Josh, we went to Carnegie together, um, so we've known each other since we were 18 years old. So to um, and you know in the same class, you know it's it's a really special thing when you get to um, chart and watch the growth of of your friends. You know, I mean Josh was always brilliant. He was writing and creating things when we were in college. So to see what he's been able to create for himself in, in film is extraordinary. He saw Hamilton, you know, three or four times okay. and we'd hang out backstage. So the fact that we got to sort of reconnect and um, work on this together was special. We traveled Europe together, you know, on days off. Probably working with Josh was... That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. I love the friendships, how it comes full circle. It's really sweet. So you started in a lot of TV before we saw you in Hamilton. Now you're in this film. You're in this film. Do you think you'll do more film down the line? More films down the line? Oh, yeah, we have a couple films lined up for next mm -hmm. year, which I'm very excited about. It's it's very new. When people ask me what I wanted to do post Hamilton, as you can imagine, it's like um, I want to do all the stuff that people wouldn't let me do before Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, I, you know, I'm very interested in, in, in walking through the doors, the new doors that are open because of uh, being a part of a phenomenon. And nobody would have let me do Murder on the Orient Express or Christmas albums. And, I mean, you know, like this is, it's all so, so new. So I want to keep doing that. I have so much to learn in, in film and so much to learn in music. So um, we're going to, there's a new album coming out next year and a couple more movies coming out next and year And the as well. new album is an album of originals, right? That's right. Yeah. So are you helping write, produce? What's the I plan? Am. Yeah. I am, yes. I'm keeping it very close to the vest. Okay. Uh, but um, yes, it's going to be... Um, Originals, and in the same way that we do anything, you know, we, we I don't want to make throwaway music. I don't. I I'm tr gonna try to make music that um, my friend. I'm gonna try to make music that um, again feels feels classic. You know, an album that you can put on if if we're lucky enough. You know, there are. I've yet to make. It's a difficult thing to do, mm -hmm. but I've yet to make like that signature record you know there's some people of course there's there's stevie wonder and there's prince and there's people that have made 20 <laughs> signature albums but there's for a lot of artists i won't mention any names because i don't want to i don't want to embarrass anyone or you know make an artist feel bad but i think if you make one 
if you make one in a career, I mean a, a record that means something to people. You guys have, you know those records that like they define a time in your life. Like you put that record on and it, the sound of it just, you know, can take you back. That's a difficult thing to do. That's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to make that signature record for the next one. Well, what's that record for you? Aside from Boys to Men, of course, Christmas. Uh, <laughs> um, well, there's... Um, the signature, like the, like the, yeah. I mean, oh man, I don't know if I, well, uh, the, the artist, the, the only reason, the, the artist that I'm thinking of that made those albums that I, you know, that I love went on to make many, many records. You know, I love James Taylor's first oh, record. Wow, you know, James yeah. Taylor's first record is so flawless. You know, it's so good. I love, um, um, Donny Hathaway, Roberta Flack, um, you know, Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye made, you know, four or five records like mm -hmm. that, you know. But probably my favorite Marvin album would be um, the last one, um, Vulnerability or Hear My Dear. It's also, be, you know, so I, I, I like artists who make a lot of those records, but as an artist, <laughs> I know, you know, setting out, it's really always about challenging the, the, it's about meeting the, the, the next challenge that's in front of your face. And so probably one of the ways that I calm my anxiety as well is to say, you just have to make this one record. If I never, I want to make the, the next album is like, if I never make another record, I made that one. Well, in tandem with everything you have going on, you're also writing a book, oh, yeah. Failing Up. Um, what, uh, we can expect that next year, right? Yeah, it's finished, yeah. It's finished, okay. So what was like, you know, going through that whole process of like looking back at your life and being like, okay, what are the moments I'm going to be talking about in this, in this book? It was one of the hardest and most rewarding things I've ever done because um, it's not, <laughs> I, I, I thought that I would have all this time <laughs> to, you know, to carve away. I thought I was going to go into the woods and write my book and, you know, spend... <laughs> Spent three months, you know, <laughs> writing this book and the way things went, you know, we had yeah. we had other things that were uh, pressing. And so I had to carve away two hours here and afternoon here, you know, and just, you know, really get it done in that way. So it was very challenging. I wrote a lot on planes, a lot on planes. Turned out, you know, I used to sleep on planes. Huh. It's a great time to work. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fantastic, you, you know, can't like, do anything else. Exactly. You're stuck. <laughs> you like, you pound a red eye, which is a, you know, a coffee with a shot of espresso. And like, then you're up. And like, that's your like free, you know, nobody's bothering you. Phone's not on. Put some headphones on and work. So I worked a lot on planes. I, um, I found this, you know, Lynn knows what this is about. I have, you know, writing friends that know what this, this is about. But it was, I, I just found a creative space that I'd never found before. A lot of times in these chapters, any writers in here? Writers? Oh, quite a few. So yeah. you guys know what this is. Sometimes you, my, my friend Griffin taught me, he's a writer, and he taught me, you know, that it's called free writing. I didn't know what it was called. But that basically, you know, I would be writing. We Every chapter was outlined, and I would sometimes... In the middle of it, I would go off a little bit on a tangent. I'm like, I feel like this is important. Like, this is coming out now. I feel like I need to talk about this now. And you write yourself into a hole, and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this hole. This was not in the outline. This is not where we intended to go. And so you keep writing, and you're looking for the very first moment where you can stop. As soon as I can get out of this hole, like I'm done, um, it's just such a, a strange and rewarding creative journey because when you get out of it, I mean, the things that you've gathered from, from digging yourself out of that hole is, is um, stuff that's with you always. I had a wonderful huh. time writing the book. In summary, in summary. <laughs> is the you went into your question. own head over there for a while, but yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> well, I'm excited to read it. <laughs> yeah, it's about, you know, and, it, and essentially like the, the central theme of it is about when I um, when I finally gave myself permission to fail, has anybody in here? Did anybody in here struggle with the perfectionism thing, right? Like that thing. And on one hand, it strives you to make great work that you're really proud of. But in another way, in many other ways, it holds you back because you're because it's really about fear. It's really about like you don't want to show the ugly parts. And so the second you can give yourself the permission um, to fail. I think is when you get 
um, the the really brilliant stuff, the gold. I mean, you know, we were up the street. We were at the public theater. I mean, we, that thing could have gone horribly wrong. Yeah, and it went horribly right. It went horribly right. <laughs> Wonderfully like, horribly right. Yeah. Oh gosh. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're right. It did. And that thing, of course, we're talking about is Hamilton. Uh, you, there was a moment that you you were not going to take Hamilton. You're go, you're on a TV show, and then you decided to take Hamilton. Probably one of the best decisions you ever made. That's right. Yeah, amazing. So, I actually saw you in Hamilton as Aaron Burr. It was like a last minute ticket, and it was amazing. And uh, you know, thinking back on it, do you feel like Hamilton is op open doors for you? But do you think it's opening doors for people of color for Broadway in general, and in, in you know, because we've seen it, it's still good. But like, where where is it going next? For sure. I mean, I I was in a show. I replaced Titus Burgess, Emmy nominee Titus Burgess in Jersey Boys up at La Jolla. I was 23, 24 years old, and Titus was leaving to come to New York to do Good Vibrations. Who saw that? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People. One love. Oh, uh, that's right. Um, but he left Jersey Boys to do Good Vibrations in the original iteration of it. And um, I, so I saw the birth of a phenomenon, right? Um, I had been in Rent before that, before that, but I wasn't there at the beginning. So, you know, with Jersey Boys, I really, I was there opening night of, in La Jolla. So to like, to see like, wow, this is what the birth of a phenomenon feels like. Um, and with no envy, honestly, I just, I l looked with marvel at the opportunity that that was gonna create for four white guys. You know, that they would basically get to go to these, you know, wonderful colleges and universities and learn these skills of, you know, how to, how to act. You know, we go to these places, you know, you, w you work on Shakespeare and Moliere and Tennessee Williams and so that you can come out in the business and show what you can do. You know, you can flex and fly on, on stage and on screen. And I was like, that's, that's amazing for four, four white guys. And it has been. It was for, what, 12 years. I watched kids come out of Carnegie and Juilliard and go into Jersey Boys and, and find the best of themselves. That didn't exist. Mm -hmm for us, mm -hmm. that, you know, I didn't have that. I didn't have a play, you know, I was in the back in Jersey Boys. I was, you know, I was literally backstage doubling Frankie Valli's vocals. You know, that was, that, that didn't uh -huh. exist for us. And so it didn't exist for Lynn. Right. And so what Lynn did, which is the, I mean, the greatest thing you can do is to, he created the opportunity for himself and for other people. For me, for David, who knew who David was before, <laughs> right? You did, she said, I did. <laughs> you get the gold star. <laughs> you know, for Lynn David, for, for Philippa, to, to be introduced to a talent like that. Um, so uh, I'm extraordinarily grateful. And to answer your question that you yeah. asked me, what that means is that now, um, I mean, it's one of the greatest roles that ever, that's ever been written. For, for guys, all those roles, but you know, Burr in particular. And you know, now there's a place for you to go when you're in school, you can train, you can get yourself ready to come and take on the challenge of Burr, to come and take on the challenge of Hamilton or Washington. And that's a beautiful thing. It's, it really is. It's, it's interesting too, because we're in this era now where the presidency is also at the height of you know, a lot of our minds. And then this deals with presidencies from years back. It's just kind of a it's a crazy conundrum, anyway, yeah. side note. Um, I do want to ask you, Lynn is taking this to Puerto Rico. Yeah. And uh, any chance that you would pop in for a, an Aaron Burr cameo? I, I, the answer is yes. I mean, if Lynn called me to do anything, I would, I would do anything Lynn asked me to do. But I think that this is, <laughs> I think that it's a moment, you know, I think it's his moment. I think he's, you know, he's bringing the show home and he's, you know, he's going to um, do it his way. So I, um, I don't think I'm in danger of getting that call, but if he, if he called me, I would clear my schedule and go. Amazing. Your schedule's been pretty packed lately. Uh, you performed last night at the Christmas Rockefeller tree lighting, which is busy. And then you were just at the Victoria's Secret Models fashion Shanghai, show. Yeah. How was that? That was, um, that was, it was one of the greatest days of my life. <laughs> it's just one of the greatest days of my whole <laughs> life. I, I would, I would imagine it was, you know, yeah. <laughs> for, for the obvious reasons, but also I just have to say, I, I have sort of developed, you know, <laughs> there were people, of course, I'm sure, you know, when it was announced that 
you know, usually there are major, major stars that do the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. It's watched by 1.2 billion people. It's an international phenomenon. And, you know, they announced Leslie Odom Jr. is performing. It was like, wait, what? You know what I mean? Like, what? you know, usually you have to have a hit song to sing on something like that. But um, I'm so grateful to the brand for giving me the opportunity. I, I had developed a friendship with the brand. You know, I, I did a Victoria's Secret um, commercial. You know, I did a voiceover about two years ago and, like, you know, was friendly with them over that. And then um, I got invited to perform at a birthday party for Les Wexler, the, the CEO of the corporation. And we did his birthday party. And then, like, Katy Perry's visa didn't get, uh, didn't come through. And so we got a call. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll take it. Might as well. 1.2 billion people. I'm going to be there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we had to, um, yes, it was amazing. Phenomenal. Wow. That sounds incredible. It really does. I have one last question before I ask, um, for a Q and A, but you talk about in your book, um, failing up that I haven't read it yet, but just about risks. What do you think is the biggest risk you ever took? Biggest risk I ever took. The biggest risk I ever took we already talked about the Hamilton thing, yeah. so I'll, so I'll, but I'll say, um, um, probably was when um, I had the chance to either go to Broadway and do the original cast of Aida. We had an we had a uh, an offer on the table to do that um, from my dear friend Bernie Telsey, Bernie Telsey Casting, um, or go to college. So it was like, you know, yeah. to go pro or to, you know, continue to develop my skills and learn how to do this thing for real. And um, I made the decision along with my parents who were very, they had a side, believe me. It was not, <laughs> it was not, you know, oh, you could or you, it was very much like there's that and college, you know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, Making that decision was was probably um, you know it was so formative because I was so young, and um, to get to to, to learn that um, you know it's not about how shiny the opportunity is, right? I mean, to some people, the shinier opportunity was the Broadway opening and the money and the and look and you you know, and that um, that you can walk away from something like that if it, if it doesn't feel right and you can take the less shiny thing that, that feels better to you because it's your life. This is your walk. You can do what you want to do. And still get somewhere. One last thing, 30 seconds challenge. Can you tell me a fun, interesting story about Hamilton, your time in Hamilton, anything about Hamilton in 30 seconds? <laughs> 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 Something funny that happened backstage, on stage. Yeah, I know. My, my, I, I tried to get it to run out while I was thinking of it. <laughs> Hold on, but 30 seconds. Hold, but it's not funny. Like, you know, all that stuff. All, I spent. I spent a lot of time, like, you know, crying and feeling bad and you know I mean like in the, in the best way like in the most cathartic way but you know like in the, it was such a I took that work so seriously um that yeah that I didn't have a whole lot of like you know you're not gonna catch uh, not a, as Burr like I wasn't you know on stage breaking character to like laugh at my scene partner you know what I mean like I was in it I was in it so oh, I'm gonna fail the 30 second challenge at the, and risk don't be afraid to fail failing up Thank you. I love it. All right, let's. I get just failed. <laughs> right let's there. Let's get to the Q and A. Who's first? Oh my. Our God. friend. My friend. So, what did you do before you started to perform in Hamilton? What did I do? Because you're like, I have, I didn't know who you were before I saw you in <laughs> Hamilton. What did you do? I worked for like 15 years before that. I was doing lots of TV that apparently you didn't give a darn about. <laughs> Um, I was on, I was on a, a show called Smash. Did you ever watch Smash? No. <laughs> she was like, I was four. I don't know what that is. Um, I was on a show called Person of Interest. I was on a show called Gilmore Girls. Nothing, nothing. CSI Miami, nothing. <laughs> Apparently I didn't do anything before Aaron Burr, and that's okay. That's, that's okay. Great question. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thanks for that question. All right, who's next? Hello. Oh, okay, great. Hi, Hi Leslie, how's it going? Um, I, I'm sure you've been asked you know, this question countless times, but I was just curious, what are the most significant changes in your life that occurred after being in Hamilton? I think the most, I mean, the, the most significant thing is like it gave me, um, it gave me a station. It's given me, um, however small, however insignificant, you know, you can call it a platform, or you can call, I just think it's given me um, a spot, right? First, I was telling Tay Diggs this, we were at um, Pip's wedding, and I was talking to Tay about how before Hamilton, it was like, you know, you go in for, you go in for an audition, and it's like, could you, I wish he was a little more Tay Diggs. Uh. <laughs> I wish, uh, but I wish he was just like a little more Denzel. Or, I mean, he's so good, but like, you know. And what it did was it gave me my own lane because I got to show people finally, you know, um, who I am and what I do. And so now when, when I'm being called in, they, they're calling me in to, to be myself for the first time. So it took, a, it took a while, but that's the most significant change. Nobody's ever trying to make me into somebody else now, which is nice. Great, next. Hi, um, I just wanted to ask, you know, you were talking about the signature album earlier and really your Christmas album um, from last year sort of become that signature Christmas album for me. And um, so I was just wondering about the, the song, Winter Song in specific. Um, it seems like it's sort of a tone shift from the rest of the album and I wanted to know sort of the thought process and why you chose to include that song compared to all these classic Christmas songs. Great question. Thank you so much for, for saying that. We, when we recorded the first album, we said we wanted to make the kind of music that Nat King Cole might make today. And so, of course, that um, includes the American Songbook, but, you know, we, I want to have a foot in contemporary music. I, you know, I'm, this is my time to this is my time. I mean, I, I you know, I want to make um, music that speaks to us now. I want to, I want to, um, we want to be uh, current and relevant. Um, so it's like it's, you know, ha understanding and reaching back to the past, but, you know, making a, a stand in the present and hopefully even casting a vision for the future. So um, we looked at modern songs. Like, are there any songs from the last, you know, 10, 15 years that we should include in this? And that's a Sarah Bareilles and Ingrid Michaelson tune, and it's gorgeous. And I also thought, so because so much work goes into these, into any project you do, it's like, is there, is there something we can record on this thing that we can do outside of the Christmas season? You know, something that has a message that's um, about more than just, you know, Christmas trees and, and holly and hearth and mistletoe. And um, it fit, it just fit the criteria. criteria. Thanks, cool. great question. Cool, thanks for that. Who's next? Hi, I'm a huge fan. Hamilton is the, like, the reason I'm into Broadway now. Um, and personally, I'm a Burr. My friend, I have best friend who's a Hamilton, and I'm a Burr. Word. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, like, as you stated before, you've done a lot. Like, personally, I love doing Law and Order. And then, obviously, Hamilton and Broadway and Murder on the Orient Express. So with all, like, the different, like, sections of, like, the showbiz industry, are there any similarities within, like, all of those, like, including, like, making your album, being on Broadway, being on a television show? Great question. The similarity is that, and I'm, you know, I don't want to, I'm not some expert, you know, I'm still figuring it out. I'd say probably the similarity is in that what they all require is um, your presence. You know, we had um, Jordan Thaler, who's the casting director over at The Public. He came to Carnegie to teach a, a workshop, and he, he was the first one to teach us about the antenna. The, the, you know, that every actor, and this is, this is not just about actors, you know, you just have the same thing on any job interview. It's about, it's about um, realizing the room that you're in, you know? It's, not, it's about not being tone deaf, mm -hmm. right? You come in and you, and you take in the information that's happening around you and you make something that's site-specific. Site you make something that is appropriate for the room, right? You know, you, it's, you know, anybody that's giving you advice about, you know, do this on every job interview. Yeah, it's every job interview except that one, 
where you where you feel something different. And it's like, I know this is unorthodox, but I feel like I should do this in this situation. So you that's what I mean is you know, you're on a television set, you're on a film set, you're on a you're on an off-Broadway stage, you're on a Broadway stage. It's about making something that's site specific. What is this room? Where am I? Who's here? And let's make something for this room today. Does that make sense? Be present. I like yeah. it. Okay, one last question. I yes. was wondering, out of all of the songs that you sing, what song do you sing to your daughter the most? What song I what? Sing to your daughter the most. My daughter the most. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I sing, I, I probably... I probably sing, cheer up, Lucy, give me a smile. What happened to the smile I used to know? Don't you know your grin has always been my sunshine? Let that sunshine show. Probably that one. Aww. Well, I can't imagine a, a better way to end. Uh, Leslie, thank you for coming by today. Thank you for your questions. The album's out now. It's called Simply Christmas. Thank you.